I'm Gizbutt, I'm the guitarist and singer of Jonas Stark and uh, we've got a new single video out at the moment called Shuffle in the Pack. So my music career started off when I was in a band called The Exits, we had a few name changes and then in time we became The System and it was during The System that we started to play the you know community centres and our first pubs and things like that. And then I got noticed by uh, the Destructors, so I joined the Destructors, and went from the Destructors into the English Dogs, and then from the English Dogs, eventually I found my way into the Prodigy, and at the same time as that, Jane Stark first happened, and then after Jane Stark, I had a little period where I was in uh, Fields of the Nephilim. I've been in all sorts of bands. I've been with Andy Sneap in Sabbath, I've been uh, with Steve Ignorant, we did The Last Supper, playing all the crass songs around the world. And uh, we've been with the Stupids at one point, but I'm back with Jaina Stark, and that's the band that I formed in 1996. And um, yeah, I'm going to show you right now, tell you my favourite, or some of my favourite songs, albums, CDs, um, that have made some kind of impact on me during my life. So here we go, no particular order. But the first one happens to be The Kinks' Ape Man. And this was the first record, the first record I ever bought. And I bought this when I was four years old. And I'm not lying, my dad gave me 50 pence and I went down to the shop and I bought it. And the reason why I bought it was because of this record, Lola by The Kinks, that I liked so much. So I needed to get the next one. So that's the very first record I ever bought. Um, okay, Bloody Revolutions by Crass. So first heard this on John Peel and uh, fell in love with it. Uh, very powerful, political, amazing lyrics, very different, progressive. And um, Steve Ignorance doing the vocals, doing the, uh, the verses and the choruses, and then there's a middle section there, Eve Libertine, she comes in and she sings. And that's a very powerful section, uh, I love that. Anyway, I was very lucky for Steve Ignorant to phone me up, thanks to being recommended by Von Ritchie of De Totenhosen. And Steve gave me a ring and said, I wanna go and tour the Crass songs. Um, do you wanna come and be the guitarist? So I obviously said yes. And in the first rehearsal, uh, we was doing Bloody Revolutions and Eve wasn't going to be in the band and uh, the person that was going to do Eve's role wasn't there at the rehearsal. So there was, uh, we were wondering what are we going to do when we get down to this middle section where Eve is supposed to sing, should we just like, not have any vocals? And I suggested, well I could always do it. Uh, so I went for it and as you can imagine screaming my head off and then I had my eyes closed whilst I was doing it. And then open my eyes at the end of the section to see everyone around the, the room just on on their backs in laughter. But we did some amazing gigs with that band. So uh, that was a great experience. Really loved it. And, okay, let's move on to The Clash. When The Clash toured for this album, um, I went to go and see them. And I was 12 years old. And it's the first gig that I went to see without my parents taking me. I went with my friends, it was to the Marina Stadium in Peterborough, and it was such an impression to make on a young 12-year-old boy. Everything that a growing boy needs. Thin Lizzy, Live and Dangerous. Um, two stories, one of them, I used to watch Top of the Pops when I was a kid, and when I was 10 years old, I was watching Top of the Pops, and there was, there was a band playing a song, and... Um, it wasn't Thin Lizzy, it was another band, but I thought, oh, I really like that. I want to know who it was, but I didn't catch the name of the song or the band. So I thought, well, the only thing I can do is wake up really early in the morning and listen to the radio. So I woke up at six, switched on the radio, and the first song I heard was a Thin Lizzy song. And uh, from that day on, I really liked it. My sister had a boyfriend called Harry Sayers, and he was a great guitarist. So when I was 13, he used to show me loads of Thin Lizzy solos and I learned them and I bought this album and I was learning every song back to back and uh, really enjoyed their music. Jimi Hendrix. 
this is a bootleg. It's a white label bootleg that my brother owns, and it's of the Woodstock uh, performance. And um, my brother was a big influence on me, and he was the guy that inspired me to pick up a guitar in the first place. And um, he was having a party in his flat, and I must have been like about 11 years old, and uh, I wanted to come into his party because this is my big brother and he's cool, you know. And he says, well, the only way that we're going to let you in the party is if you learn how to play this. And he put that album on and he put on Red House. So I'm 11 years old attempting to play Red House. Well, you know, I couldn't actually play it, but I did learn a few things that night. So I did learn a few licks. And uh, are you experienced? Voodoo Child, what a song. And I used to watch... Jimi Hendrix uh, live performances on VHS over and over and over again. I used to wear it out and I used to copy the licks and then try to do them in my band at the time, which was The System, and then later on, you know, in The Destructors. Uh, Motorhead. Um, first heard Motorhead playing Bomber on Top of the Pops and I thought, wow, this is something else because it's like heavy rock, heavy metal. Uh, but it's got that voice, that amazing voice of Lemmy's, and it's got this punk spirit and speed. And um, I just started to get this idea together, form this idea, well, why don't I try and do something like that with my punk band at the time that was the system? Um, you can't deny it, Ace of Spades is possibly the greatest song of all time. I'm sure some of you think it is. It certainly is one of them. This album I really like it because I like all the versions of the songs and I really like We Are The Road Crew and when we used to go in Destructors gigs we used to get a van and like fill it up with like 25 people in the back of the van and we used to sing uh, We Are The Road Crew and Ace of Spades on the way to the gig. So The Damned, Machine Gun Etiquette because it was around the same time you know hearing Motorhead and then hearing Love Song being played on Top Of The Pops because Love Song was it's a punk band with a great intricate guitar solo and it's got you know complexities about it and it had speed the speed that the damned had with love song at that time was the fastest thing that i'd ever heard so it that straight away attracted me and um i wanted to try and fuse together motorhead and the damned that was the initial idea um, gonna mention Randy Rhodes, Ozzy Osbourne uh, guitarist Randy Rhodes, because I used to travel to English Dogs rehearsals listening to uh, uh, this album and Diary of a Madman, like on repeat. And I was such a fan of Randy Rhodes that later on I formed a band with a friend of mine called Fozzy, who's an amazing drummer who's one of my best friends and he plays in Jane and Stark now and uh, we formed a band and we called it Fozzy Gisborne Ozzy Osbourne possibly the greatest band name ever all right so we've got to go on to the Beatles which have inspired me more than any band ever and um, this was the first Beatles album that I ever got my brother gave me it and I think it was the songs help and ticket to ride that was the beginning of it. Um, it's not my favourite album now, but that was the beginning. That was the first album. I've been lucky enough uh, to uh, play with Pete Best, the original drummer of the Beatles. I played with him many times. I've been to Liverpool on a yearly basis, uh, if, if not more. Um, I've been to Pete's birthday party, friends with his family. I've been to the opening of the Magical uh, History Museum. I'm close friends with all the family, with Rogue with Lee Best, with, you know, all the family. And it's great having a connection with an original Beatles. So, yeah, and I'm going to choose Sgt. Pepper. The song Sgt. Pepper is one of the songs that helped to influence the Jane Stark song Shuffle in the Pack. Um, I was trying to think what Beatles song could I kind of say was an influence. Well, could it be I Am The Walrus because that's a slow, heavy song and it's got John Lennon's gravelly vocal. Or could it be um, Hey Bulldog? But no, I think it's something more like Sgt. Pepper because the heaviness of the track, obviously a Hendrix-influenced track, 
But when that harmony vocal comes in, that's when the magic happens. The Roots. Okay, well, the crack album by The Roots. Well, my old band, The Exit, would cover Babylon's Burning. And that whole technique, the guitar technique of uh, palm muting, uh, was one that I enjoyed. And um, this album, I think, um, it's, it led the way for fusing punk energy, punk lyrics, um, with a more progressive and textured sound. And I think that this is one of the greatest albums ever. And it's, it's got dimension, it's, it's got anger, it's got everything in it. You know, the playing, every single instrument is advanced. It's right out there. Um, any musician in the world should appreciate this album. Any fan of punk, any fan of heavy rock, even fans of heavy metal, you should appreciate this album. As you should appreciate this one, Killing Joke, which I first heard, this is the first Killing Joke album, first heard this on John Peel, and then went to go and see them playing in Northampton with my friends Chris Lovell and Mirko Ogbradovic, and at the time, um, I think I've, I think I've just got into the Destructors at the time, I think so, and uh, anyway, I was in a band as well called Kiosk 2, and we used to uh, cover War Dance, um, Got to mention the song The Weight because I think that The Weight is one of the songs that inspired me a lot when I was, uh, you know, looking for this punk metal thing. <clears throat> Never mind the bollocks. This began the whole new sound. Uh, heavy guitars with lyrics about, you know, topical subjects. The Berlin Wall, um, a girl that worked in a factory, people that were morons. Um, Quotes such as, we don't wear flares, um, this is the sound of anger, um, a voice that fights back. So I love this album, uh, the sound of it, the whole approach, the energy of it and the anger of it. And this particular one, when I bought this, it had no submission on it. You got a free one-sided submission single. Submission is uh, a great song and I've been in... Um, bands and covered loads of Sex Pistols songs and the Prodigy used to come on stage to Anarchy in the UK and um, yeah I met John Lydon when he was with Public Image in San Francisco a few years ago. My friend Walter Jaquist is the sound man and he was the sound man of Jana Stark so tedious link. Metallica, one of my favourite ever bands partly due to the uh, the approach that they had at the beginning when they did Kill Em All, which again sounded to me like a punk metal fusion, the whole machine gun guitars, um, James Hetfield rhythm guitar approach, James Hetfield's vocals, you know, it did everything for me. And um, when the English Dogs were recording Where Legend Began, the whole band came down to the studio and we met them. And this is the um, Cliff Burton lineup. So this is when they were touring Master of Puppets. And we hung out with Metallica and, you know, I even played them a tape of The Roots. So, again, another link. But these three albums are all amazing. They're recommended for everyone's record collection. Now, I used to be in touch quite a lot with Digby Pearson of Earache Records. He used to send me tapes. He used to put together tapes and send me random stuff. Amongst them were Loudness. And when I got introduced to Loudness, I heard the sound of this amazing guitar player, Akira Takasaki, and that really inspired me to try lots of things. As soon as I heard this guy, I was really working for it. I wanted to know more. I was on the search, as I was when I heard Van Halen. Now, when I heard Van Halen for the same time, I thought it was inhuman. I thought, how do you do this thing? And then I heard these notes, and I thought, how is he managing this kind of fast triplet thing? If you've not heard Van Halen, you know, you should hear the song Eruption because it, it's just a mind-blowing, very short instrumental that's got like this tapping section, which is very famous. But in that day, I didn't know how it was done. And so I used to get my finger and put it over the top of the guitar like this on the neck of the guitar. And I used to do this trilling like this with this hand. So I had this mad technique that was a little bit inefficient, to be honest, looked good. I used it in the English Dogs, 
We, we used it on the, uh, to the ends of the earth. And also, I think I might have used it on Forward Into Battle when we did songs like Wall of Steel. So, yeah, that is very possible. Now, I'm just choosing stuff randomly. Um, Bad Brains, the green cassette. First heard this, and again, this is just, uh, when I first heard it, I thought, wow, this is a, a punk band that's just taking other things into another dimension because they're, they're playing super fast and all the instruments are played brilliantly and the lead guitarist Dr. No is absolutely searing leads and uh, when in the Destructors we were lucky enough to support Bad Brains and that was like 1982, 1983 so it was when Bad Brains were at their best I think um, it's debatable because of course they did this album and when they did this one, again, it was like another world. Every song on this album is amazing. It's a, got incredible production as well. Um, but there's a song on it called Sacred Love, which is, is just like a ghost in the machine. That, that was like a, a, literally another world. It's, uh, when we heard that, we thought, a punk band is doing this. They're doing everything. They're mixing it all up. And I think from the beginning... That's what I always enjoyed. All right, so the UK subs saw these at the Marina Stadium, covered loads of their songs when I was in um, the system. In the Destructors, we supported them. In the UK subs, they supported us. And with Janus Stark now, um, me and Charlie Harper have always been friends. There was a period of time when I actually played with the UK subs it was in 96 they were having problems with their guitarist Al so I stepped in for a few gigs and I kind of like joined them for a very short period of time and me and Charlie wrote a couple of songs together one of them influenced the song Enemy Lines which is on the Jana Stark album Great Adventure Cigar so check that song out and um, but you know I got asked to join the Prodigy when I joined the Prodigy you know it, it, it kind of knocked that on the head I'm going to mention Warhead because I used to cover this one and I think again it's a great example of a punk band showing that they can be more than just you know 10,000 miles an hour not that there's anything wrong with that but it's good when you can do more with it like what the Ruts did you know The Living End got introduced to these by my friend Evan Hirsch but you know what I had heard them before and I'm kind of ashamed to say I was on a uh, TV program like a, a kind of rock quiz program called crashed out and there was one point when they played a living end song um victims of society and they asked us what do you think and I, at the time i said oh i'm not too sure about it. it sounds just sounds like they're copying green day i really regret saying that i love the living end i enjoy all of their albums and i like the fact that they confuse punk rock with rock heavy rock rockabilly great guitar solos great lyrics you know um they sing songs about like unions and stuff like that and people having problems with their jobs and you know it's just you know it's great they're an awesome band I've been really enjoying them joy division um okay so i came in from school it was like 1979 it was september and you know i was knackered it came in sat down in front of the TV and I put on this program called Something Else and on came Joy Division playing She's Lost Control and since that day I have borrowed that riff and put it in many, many, many songs. I put it in songs by Jana Stark such as White Man Speaks With Forked Tongue. I have put it in songs by the other another band I had called The More I See. We had a song called Suck On These Words and now in the new Jane of Stark song shuffle in the pack, I've borrowed the riff again. See if you can find it. It is in there. If you've got good ears, you'll find it. Andy James, currently definitely one of my favourite guitar players. English guitar player. Um, he plays seamless uh, lines that go from one to the next that are just long and intricate and beautiful and you know powerful and you know he's very inspiring he's got amazing technique he's got lots of it and uh, every time i hear him i just want to pick up the guitar he's a uh, great inspiration 
He's a friend. I've known him since 2005. He's been close with me on many different occasions. He actually helped me write some solos for uh, some songs that I did with The More I See. And, uh, you know, we're still friends now. Helmet. I got introduced to Helmet via um, Liam in uh, The Prodigy. I had kind of heard them before, but it was Liam, uh, me and him shared this, you know, uh, a passion for Helmet. So I, and I got this particular album and the first six, I just realised what I said then, me and Liam t shared a passion for Helmet. I don't know if that sounds right. Anyway, you know, moving on. The first six songs of this, they influenced my writing at the time when I was writing the James Stark uh, Great Adventure cigar album. We had a song called White Man Speaks with Forked Tongue that is definitely helmet influenced. And that song is the inspiration, probably one of the main inspirations behind the new song Shuffle in the Pack. So yeah, helmet. Black Flag. Well, um, first of all, Black Flag at the Christmas on Earth punk festival in 1981 uh, well, a bunch of punks from Peterborough went to go and see them uh, well, I went to see loads of bands and um, yeah think that they are possibly the angriest band of all time and uh, the song Damaged yeah it's definitely the sound of someone who's tapped and uh, it's got this flattened fifth chord if you're not very musical let me tell you that it's possibly a sound that some people regard as being jarring but I love it yeah really enjoy Black Flag got to mention them got to mention Judas Priest especially this album Firepower because the connection that it has with one of my best friends Andy Sneap and I played with Andy in Saba and Andy has produced um, some of the albums that I've done like English Dogs All the World's a Rage and the Unholy Feast album by The More I See and the Walter Hungry album by The More I See and uh, I saw Andy go through the, the very stages of wanting, being a fan of Judas Priest, wanting to work with them in Sabbath when we used to go out on the road we used to be singing Free Will Burning and just witnessing that to him explaining to me how much he enjoyed their songwriting techniques and then you know he gets the phone call to produce their album and then he gets the phone call to go on tour with the band so I witnessed that that whole build up and what a thing to see Dag Nasty a favourite of the Peterborough punks during the mid 80s and the greatest most honest personal lyrics like everything about this I love the guitar playing I love the riffs it's simple but it's from the heart and it's direct and I really enjoy this band. Finally, I'm going to mention Blackmail because they're a band that I kind of discovered when I was touring Germany uh, in 2005 and I ended up um, becoming friends with the band, Ado, who's not in the band anymore, but he was a singer. Everything they did with Ado, I really enjoy. And he's like, kind of like a bit of a Beatles influence going on. So they're almost like a minor key Beatles. That's one way of describing Blackmail. And that's it for now. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm exhausted. I need to have a drink of something because my throat is dry. You're probably exhausted from listening to all that lot. Please check out the Jamie Stark video, Shuffling the Pack. And Mass Movement, thank you for letting me do this interview.